The SM-65 Atlas rocket sits on a launch pad in Cape Canaveral, Florida. It's eight stories tall, comprised of about 300,000 precision components, the pinnacle of American technology in the 1950s. At 4.37 p.m., the thrusters turn on, and the rocket begins to rise, clearing the launch tower on its ascent to the upper atmosphere. But as Atlas passed 9,000 feet, it suddenly veered off course and went into an uncontrolled tumble. Exhaust gas had leaked into the thrust section and caused a booster failure. The defunct rocket was intentionally detonated before it could crash back to the ground. The Atlas ICBM program would experience nearly a dozen of these failures over the next two years. Four of the eight first-generation models would explode mid-air, with a fifth crash landing in the Atlantic. Nonetheless, the Department of Defense would invest an estimated $4 to $8 billion into the weapons program. Not only did it represent America's best chance in a hot war against the Soviet Union, with nuclear payloads that could be accurately delivered over 6,000 miles away, but the technological advancements would also be used in the upcoming space race. The project was led by Convair, an aerospace engineering firm who pioneered the technology at the core of the Atlas. Unlike earlier rockets, the Atlas stored its liquid oxygen fuel in a balloon tank. These tanks were comprised of a paper-thin stainless steel shell, which was about half the thickness of a dime, keeping weight to the absolute minimum. It had no internal framework, supported only by the carefully calibrated interior pressure. Any minute deformity or corrosion could be catastrophic for the rocket, a danger that was exacerbated by the long prep times, which sometimes left the rocket sitting exposed on a coastal launch platform for months at a time. To combat any risk of damage to this balloon tank, Convair turned to a subcontractor called Rocket Chemical Co., based out of a small laboratory in San Diego. Their task was to develop a rust prevention solvent that could be applied to the outer shell of the Atlas rocket to repel water, protecting the internal components as they sat waiting in bunkers and launch pads. But the three employees of Rocket Chemical had no idea that the compound they were about to create would be far bigger than the Atlas program. Sources disagree on the exact details of WD-40's creation, with many attributing its invention to Rocket Chemical CEO Norman Larson. Others say it was created years before the Atlas program, in the early 1950s by an employee named Ivor Lawson. As the story goes, Lawson was supposedly approached by a naval commander who asked him to create a lubricant that could prevent salt corrosion in marine applications. Lawson, working mostly out of his garage at home, spent weeks experimenting with different formulas, making dozens and dozens of failed mixtures. But finally, on the 40th try, he struck gold, a petroleum-based mineral oil with water-displacing properties. He named it Water Displacement 40th Formula, also known as WD-40. But regardless of its origins, WD-40 had the exact rust prevention capabilities required by Convair for the Atlas rockets, and the compound was quickly shipped out to rocket storage facilities. The Atlas program's rocky start eventually recovered, with three new designs introduced over the next two years. By the end of 1959, the first squadron of missiles were deployed to operational status, complete with their protective coating of WD-40. But this wasn't just another highly specialized rocket part that would end up discarded as soon as the next generation of technology came around. WD-40 had the unique ability to fix almost anything. The few early users who were lucky enough to get their hands on WD-40 quickly realized its multi-purpose potential. Convair employees began to smuggle cans of it out of missile silos in their lunchboxes to use at home. It was perfect for cleaning tools, loosening rusted bolts, or fixing squeaky doors. It wasn't long before Rocket Chemical Co. decided to capitalize. In 1958, employees of the firm began selling boxes of WD-40 out of the trunks of their cars. Soon, it was on the shelves of nearly every hardware store in the San Diego area. And in the 60s, things began to accelerate for the company. 
They achieved national recognition for donating supplies of WD-40 to hurricane victims, helping to prevent corrosion that could have been caused by incoming seawater. And global recognition was achieved when it was sent overseas to support the war efforts in Vietnam. One soldier even wrote back to report that a can of WD-40 had saved his life, allowing his well-lubricated rifle to continue functioning while others failed. By the end of the decade, 55-gallon drums of the stuff were being shipped to suppliers all over the planet. The Atlas missile program had long since ended, replaced by the superior Titan series and Minuteman ICBMs. But Rocket Chemical was just getting started. In 1969, then-CEO John Barry decided to rename the company after its only product. As he said, we don't make rockets. It was no longer just a niche missile product. Combined with its iconic blue and yellow color scheme, WD-40 had become a household name in just a few years. It was perfect for cleaning grease spills, reducing moisture, silencing squeaks, removing crayon from walls, and freeing up rust in parts. And the formula was never patented, meaning the exact ingredients of WD-40 have never been revealed, known only to a few select employees of the brand. The secret recipe is currently stored in a secure bank vault in San Diego. So no matter how many brands try and fail to copy the original, WD-40 has remained the all-purpose solvent of choice. As users discovered more and more purposes for WD-40, the company began to keep a database of confirmed applications, and it quickly grew into the thousands. Fishermen swore the scent of it attracted fish. Truckers used it to remove road tar. A bus driver even applied WD-40 to remove a stuck python from the undercarriage of his bus. Rather than changing and updating the original formula, WD-40 chose to stick with what worked, selling the same product for decades, only providing updates every now and again to the can that applied it. New styles of spray nozzles come out every few years, helping the brand to maintain its leading position in the rust prevention industry. Today, over a million cans of WD-40 are sold every week. It can be found in four out of five American homes and is honored at the San Diego Air and Space Museum for its contributions to flight history. It's Cold War missile technology in a can, used aboard space shuttles, during Antarctic expeditions, and in every garage on the planet. I've left an Amazon affiliate link for WD-40 in the description below, so you can top off your supply and help support the channel at the same time. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you want to hear more stories like this.